Greetings everyone and welcome to No BS Baking, you got JP here. Now today we'll explore the direction of the baking industry, some of the consumer shifts, new baking tech and emerging trends driven by consumer demand, and most importantly, how this shift in research will benefit the home baker in the near future. Now let's take a step forward and see what's in store as we bake to the future. Like every industry, the baking industry takes many of its cues from not only customer feedback, but from consumer purchasing and marketing trends. Here are some of the key points trending higher and higher on the consumer checklist. Although the demand for bakery products continues to grow, healthier choices are being one of the fastest growing segments for this market. So now let's just take a look at these things a little bit further. Better for you, better for the environment has never been higher on consumers' checklists. Sustainable sourcing is high on the agenda with consumers more and more looking to companies that take environmental leadership and social responsibility seriously. Given the fragmented, regionalized nature of the global bakery market, there are opportunities to bring concepts from one region to another. Now, I included this one more because as more and more people are experimenting with different styles and types of baked products and ingredients around the world, like pulse flowers and other cool stuff, for making different styles of often healthier and more nutritious home-baked goodies. This area of the market is growing very quickly. Generational differences with respect to the types of breads that are bought today differ from those of Gen X. Where simple white or whole wheat sandwich breads were the mainstay, there's an ongoing shift, especially amongst millennials who are leading a surging interest in breads with perceived health benefits like seeded, multi-grains, ancient grain varieties. Now, even though we're talking about the future of baking, ironically, a rapid growing trend is interest in ingredients from the past, such as ancient grains and pulse flowers. Pulse flour is made from pulses, which are edible seeds of legumes, such as chickpeas, lentils, lupin or lupini beans, and a multiple variety of peas. Pulse flowers are nutritional powerhouses, high in dietary fiber, protein, and rich in micronutrients. These flowers are enjoying ever-increasing demand as consumers look for healthier, more nutritious baked products that as a bonus are gluten-free and clean label. The industry has been moving at high speed toward more clean label products that are familiar, recognizable ingredients with natural origins, non-GMO and free or low in processing aids or chemical additives that's healthy, you know, allergen friendly, less processed and without additives that cause or may cause harm to health. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, more and more focus is on responsible, sustainable manufacturing and our sourcing of ingredients. And with all of this in mind, it is a fine line as many surveys have been conducted that show consumers are not willing to, to compromise easily when it comes to taste, texture or shelf life. Now I've mentioned in a number of my videos that sometimes names on an ingredient declaration can be misleading. There are many completely natural additives that are being used both now and in the future that may have some scary sounding names, yet still are 100% natural. The industry is working to find solutions to these ends. Some of the tech that uh, is being used already or is currently being researched is 
enzymes that improve strength and handling properties of the dough and that are label friendly. Sustainably produced emulsifiers that contain no trans fat. Now there's some amazing research going on right now in this field and a number of companies have introduced some exciting new products with notable improvements from both a health and a label declaration perspective. So there's going to be more focus on ferments and fermented ingredients for their natural flavor benefits, preservation qualities, and shelf life. And lastly, natural plant extracts that prevent rancidity, minimize color changes, and contribute to fresh flavors throughout the shelf life of the product. Sugar and salt reduction is high on the list for most people, as it is also for the ingredient and bakery product suppliers. Sugar reduction is challenging for baked goods since it performs numerous functions beyond just sweetening. Now I'm not going to get into all the tech that's currently being explored, but suffice it to say that experimentation into artificial and natural high intensity sweeteners are being explored and look very promising along with sweet bulking ingredients such as polyols. Another exciting area under development is sweet proteins. Now here I've listed a few. These are derived from African and Asian fruits and they provide amazing flavor enhancement, flavor modifications like changing sour taste to sweet and or just plain old sweetening. Now, although many have not yet hit mainstream baking, some can be purchased online and can be found in a number of different health snacks, dietary supplements, and are often available in both tablet and powder forms. And also plant-based sweeteners like stevia extract, inulin, and erythritol, showing big promise as white sugar alternatives. Now in the meantime, you can explore a wide range of sugar replacement or reduction products already on the market for the home baker. Take a check online. You may be surprised by the options already available. But please do your homework as simply swapping out sugar with uh, any sugar substitute may negatively affect product flavor, processing, or the finished characteristics of your product. Now when it comes to salt, things get really tricky. Yes, of course you can reduce the amount of salt in your recipe, but be careful, as salt performs a vital function in dough. Too little, you can find you have a bland tasting, soft, sticky mess on your hands with a weak dough structure that's much more susceptible to collapse. Now, some people opt for using sea salt due to its healthier, healthier connotation, but be assured sea salt is sodium chloride, as is table salt. And from a health perspective, pretty much the same thing. Now, in efforts of not being too repetitious, I suggest you watch my video on salt and salt reduction options for baking, where you'll get all of this explained to you, as well as viable option for dramatically reducing sodium chloride from your diet without sacrificing baking performance. And if you haven't already, please give me a like and subscribe. It really, really helps me as I'm trying to grow this channel. Now when it comes to GMOs, there's a mixed bag of information out there on whether they're good or they're bad for you. Now some scientists say that GMOs can dramatically help with sustainable farming techniques, while others say the opposite. Regardless of which side of the fence you sit on, the future is leaning away from GMOs. However, once again, it will come down to prices for the consumer and sustainable farming as we continue to pile more mouths to feed on this planet. Currently, there is numerous non-GMO ingredients and products out there to choose from, so if this is what concerns you, you've got options. As consumer trends shift more and more to cater to those market segments of people suffering or concerned about health issues, the industry is responding with ingredients, products, and recipes that meet or at least support the efforts to reduce certain things from the diet. There continues to be a lot of research going into this area as demand for these types of products increase. This part of the bakery market continues to grow and the food industry is on it. One thing for certain is Artisan is here to stay. However, for cost reasons, many bakeries have modified original recipes and processes to keep costs down and profits up. Now this is a fine line to walk 
as consumers seem willing to spend more money for authentically produced artisan specialty bread products and are trending more for quality with price being secondary. The use of sourdough, ancient grains, and heirloom wheats will continue to develop as consumers continue to trust in tradition and buy into the backstory of handmade old country style breads. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to also check out some of these other videos that I've got listed right up over here. Until next time, we'll see you, no BS baking.